Lawrence Van Cleef from uh, Will is going to lead the uh, final uh, discussion. Here. Yeah, I just want to read a few sentences. Uh, a friend of ours from Philadelphia was in um, Haiti in June, and her, her husband is a doctor. He's a nurse, and they visited the hospital in Cité Soleil, um, St. Catherine's Hospital. And so she's just writing a very brief report. There's no running water, no electricity, a non-functional operating room, no nutritional services, and no sanitation. Her husband tried to see patients during his time there. Eye, ear, nose, and throat specialist he is. The exam room was a dark hallway where they were doing repair work. But she said the hospital did serve as kind of a safe haven where people could uh, safely, for instance, meet with these two people to report some of the things that are going on. And uh, they heard these messages from the people who came. There's no security, a great deal of fear, including fear of the UN soldiers, and no economic hope, no sign of jobs which they are desperate for. And uh, finally she said that people are afraid to go out after dark. Um, the uh, borders of City Soleil are guarded on one side by UN, quote, peacekeepers heavily armed and gangs on the inside also armed. They went back and forth to the hospital uh, luckily in a hospital bus. So I think it would be helpful right now if we shared whatever you folks are doing about the situation. Um, another connection, by the way, that we didn't make, and we had hoped to have Lisa Valente here, who just returned from Cuba with the Pastors for Peace group, where they were held at the border, is that Cuba um, is of course high on the list for this administration and it's thought that Haiti could even be a military uh, place for the U.S. to take off oh, launching pad. Any good material on air from Port au Prince on Pacific Radio on Democracy Now! about two or a half weeks ago with President Gerard Jean Just. Right, he was in his car, right. he was being interviewed, he was on his cell phone, right. and he, he said, said there is followed. a police car following That's me. That's right, I remember hearing Within that. hours, he was in prison. He's That's still right. there. Right. Bill Quigley, a professor of law at Loyola University, a colleague of Ann Fager, uh, Fagan Ginger, is going down to um, Haiti imminently. He's collecting letters. If you're on the uh, website for uh, the Institute, you've just received a brochure of it, the Institute, the Institute has issued an appeal for letters to Bill Quigley online. You can do it by email or you can do it by fax. He's looking for letters of support for Father Jean Just. He got him out of prison in February, but once again, Jean Just is in prison and he's being held uh, in the miserable jail cell situation with no charges. They can whip people up off the streets. As you may know, the Prime Minister of Haiti, Yvonne Neptune, was taken into custody almost when President Aristide was being flown out. He's been in this jail cell situation ever since last year, for over a year now. No charge, no nothing. So these are violations of international law. Yes, like 500 you. prisoners uh, of, uh, uh, in jails who, who were uh, Aristide supporters without well, any um, due process of law. Uh, the two things that I've heard that have disturbed me, and everything on KPFA that I hear about Haiti disturbs me, it's just, it's the, they're the most um, horrific reports of, of, of violence. Violence either permitted by or carried out by or under the auspices of, in some way, UN troops. I mean, it's, the whole situation sounds just unbearable. But, but, but one of the things that I really wanted to know if any of you have heard about is they talked about the connection between U.S. support for this current regime. And, I mean, I think we can all assume that the U.S. was instrumental in the overthrow of Aristide, but, but they're talking about very direct links. Well, if you're and, right, and Lactor, too, is a U.S. citizen. Right, so I just wanted to ask you, you know, what, 
what more do you know about it? Because I always hear it when I'm in my car in between going to work or doing an errand at work. Right, so well, well, I never what, hear the whole thing. Yes, well, that part was very, it was, that part was covered in terms of, this was in uh, February 29, uh, 2004, when the U.S. government went to Haiti, to uh, President Harris's home mm -hmm. and told him that his life was in danger, mm -hmm. took him and his family, put him in a plane, the plane yeah. circled. You right. may have uh, remembered right. that right. hearing right. that. The plane, they didn't even have a plan where they were going to take him. The plane was circling around, and finally they ended up with Central Africa. And then later on, uh, when uh, Maxine uh, Walters mm -hmm. and John Cornius mm -hmm. got involved, uh, and his lawyers and so on, they negotiated, and he was able to come back and make a relationship with Jamaica. He was in Jamaica for uh, a couple months, that the U.S. government fell, he, he was too close to Haiti, they, they had to remove him, and they uh, threatened almost Jamaica, to, they, he needed to go. And as a result, he, he then ended up in um, South Africa, which is where he is now. Right, but what about this U, UN, U.S. relationship, military relationship, the, I mean, direct to the to the troops that are in Haiti to the, the, for the then after that the US sent troops before the other troops were sent US sent its troops to Haiti uh, they were they also had trained uh, the U, the that's Haitian police yeah, uh, and um, and then after that when they realized they needed to make to uh, to uh, make this legal they then went to the security council and then have the security security council since they really basically the, are the, the power in the security council. Uh, then the security council they they then arrange for the, for the UN to be involved to send troops. And then in the security council they they voted uh, with of course the US approval. And and then all the troops went there. There is the, leading the troop was Brazil, and, and and twenty different other countries altogether. And you have a handout on that. Yes. yes. Um, I'm on the local station board of KPFK, which uh -huh. is the Pacifica station in uh -huh. Los Angeles. And I think that uh, Amy Goodman and also uh, Margaret Prescott has done quite a bit of coverage mm -hmm. about the Haitian situation uh, on her show, uh, it's the Sojourner Truth uh, uh, program on KPFK. And I think that uh, one thing, there are two suggestions that I have, and one is that uh, you could possibly um, email Margaret and see if you can get copies of her show and urge local stations to, uh, radio stations yeah, I, to I broadcast. Know I know Margaret sort of indirectly, yeah, but I haven't heard her reports. reports. I've heard she's in L.A., right? Yeah, she's in yeah. Los Angeles. You know, some poor coverage in <coughs> the U.S., and I've never really been able to <coughs> suss out the, the current power relationship um, because it seems like there are two, there's, it seems from the, what I've read, that there are locally homegrown Haitian factions, both pro and against Aristide. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems almost like it's a, le a legitimate, if, if war is ever legitimate, a legitimate civil beef. If there's a, you know, a people that, you know, they may be using terrible means to their ends, but that do have philosophical differences on how the country should be governed. And is that the correct analysis, or am I missing something in the research that I've done on the issue. Okay. And people that maybe know more about this than I could comment on that? But I think a lot of people understand there aren't differences of opinions, but it still does not mean you can go in and remove a person. Oh, sure, absolutely. You know, I'm just a, more, yeah. I don't feel like I fully understand the internal power dynamic, mm -hmm. and, and I would like to. And but maybe that's know. beyond the scope of where we're at right now. Oh, um, okay, I'm sorry. Um, what was the question you had, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I feel in the dark about the internal power dynamic in, mm -hmm. in Haiti, about between people that do support and people that do not support Aristide. Mm -hmm. It seems mm -hmm. like it's very divided. There's large numbers of, of people that are willing to use violence and unacceptable means on both sides, but it seems like there's a, a strong internal conflict Resident. that is resident springs Resident. from people's Resident. political Resident. feelings. Okay. When you say people, you have to understand the dynamics in Haiti. There are two, you have two groups. You have the uh, very rich, and the very rich are to remain things for things to remain status quo, and things to remain status quo means that uh, that they can uh, the poor 
can be made at the bottom where they are not being uh, educated and they can be of, uh, of cheap labor for them. For example, um, you have uh, um, Mr. Apad, A-P-A-I-D, who is one of the, basically the one who's running the country in a way. Uh, he is a very big businessman and he uh, employs 500,000 uh, Haitians uh, for something like $2 a day. Uh, and and this, these are the business of millions of dollars that goes in the, in the U.S. for companies like Hans, he does shirts and so on. F from that group of people, obviously, you go to here, they are against Harrisy because of the fact that Harrisy stood for the majority, which was the poor. And, and is that person in that faction is funding? And, they are, and, and, and the elite are funding uh, a great deal of these. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Can I ask a question? I, I recall hearing a potential. I mean, there was hope that Venezuela was going to intercede at Venezuela one point. Venezuela was going to intercede in what way? During the, uh, it was Chavez. Actually, the first time he was, um, Aristide was uh, uh, deposed, he went to Venezuela. Mm. But I remember that during that period of the coup when the army decided it couldn't do anything until he was out of office. Then they arrived. The, the, US, the US troops. The US troops uh, went immediately after they, they took Aristide out. Right, that's what I'm saying. They yes. couldn't come 12 hours before that to keep him in office. They, had a, they made a very good well, timing. To make sure that he goes out. And right. at that very moment, they brought in uh, but I, think, I distinctly remember at that time there were th articles in the news that Chavez was considering interceding when Aristide was under siege. Well, the OAS has been involved in, in, in interceding in, in, on behalf of uh, feeling that the, uh, the sover sovereignty of Haiti should be respected. So the, the OAS, which is the Organization of American uh, States uh, have all along feel this that this is a um, that they should not be the U.S. should not be interfering in the Haiti because it's a sovereign government, oh. it's a sovereign state. But but they didn't. But Venezuela did did not do anything. No. But uh, let's say didn't you have a history of a uh, oppression there with folks like Papa Doc and Baby, Baby Doc, Doc and. And, uh, Duvalier, Duvalier, yes, yeah. yes, which was which was supported, the, which the U.S. government US supported, mm -hmm. yes. But they, and, and many people who uh, who who gain from that. I mean, the U.S. government gave the uh, Duvalier, the, the former ex-president Duvalier, uh, millions, uh, and he was the most oppress oppressive government we had. But he was uh, supported by the U.S. government. And, and then, and then when he, they were, uh, when he was no, no longer supporting their agenda, then they sent two planes to take him out to France. So I guess you you have another. Well, question I just I just want to make sure then because between what you're saying and what I heard on KPFA, then the removal of Aristide from 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 Haiti and from power was a completely U.S. unilaterally engineered coup. It was a U.S. and France engineered coup. And there were, and as I mentioned, maybe, as I mentioned, there were a number of, of situations that caused that uh, factors. One, uh, Aristide, uh, uh, for example, uh, had a partnership with Cuba, which they had a bond to pick with him on that. Uh, Aristide requested France to return millions of dollars that they had to pay France in the old days. Okay. France had a bond to okay. pay with Aristide yeah, that. Getting, and then furthermore, yeah. Aristide then uh, was, did not, uh, when the US uh, uh, wanted him to privatize, he was against that, and that really was the end for him. And, 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 and as well as the fact that he wanted to raise uh, the cheap labor and, and, and pay uh, the poor people a little bit more money than they were getting. The, the, of course, the rich people were totally against that. And the minimum wage that he was going to put into law, or he was going to request the cabinet to put into law, the assembly, was uh, $3.50 a day, rather than the $2 per day, which they get now. Now, if you can raise a family on three fifty a day, I'd love to know how. I've lived in Haiti myself. And Jacqueline is from Haiti. 
Could you raise a family on 350? Could no you way. Raise, support yourself on 350? No way. No, only the families. The families are so poor. They're like families in inner city, Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Washington, D.C., where I live. You gotta have more than one wage earner to even survive, to pay the rent, to buy the food, to pay the taxes, to do transportation, clothing, to take care of the kids, to go to school, whatever it's gonna be, you know. And even when, if you're on welfare, and you don't even have a job, you gotta have some other means of support. If you've got a job at McDonald's, as you know very well, at 4.50 an hour, 5.50 an hour, 6, 7, you gotta have another job, or at least another means of support. And this is where we've seen, like, I, if you've seen Michael Moore's movie, you saw the plight of the poor mother who was working two jobs at slave wages. I don't remember even what company she was working for these wealthy, you know, minimum wage job, and uh, her kid gets into this awful situation at home. But I think that that kind of a movie, I, I, I credit what Michael Moore is doing, and what I like mostly is how he's opened up on the media, on the visibility that we never see of America's inner cities, either out in the countryside in Columbine or in the inner city in, uh, you know, Flint, Michigan. I don't mean to interrupt, but I think that many of us are sort of being something or other, I won't use an adjective, Bad things are happening in Haiti. People are dying. The government is out of, the elected president is not able to be in his own country. And we have a responsibility. And I think we should move to what can we do. I think that it's wonderful to know the facts, but knowing more facts is not going to help us. We have to know new things to do. So let me tell you, Mickle John has a web page also, I never remember to say, mcli.org. We talk, start, talk all the time about what to do. And here's a bunch of newsletters of ours that will give you a clue. Did any of you ever hear of the Nazis? <coughs> they were tried in Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. There's something called the Nuremberg Principles. The U.S. helped write them. What are the Nuremberg Principles? There are three kinds of laws. War crimes, war crimes. We're not discussing those right now because we don't have a war with Haiti. There's something called crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm and something called crimes against peace. And that's what we convicted the Nazis of. Well, the Haitian situation, the U.S. is guilty of crimes against humanity and crimes against peace. And I think you can ask your senator and your Congress member, when are they going to ask the U.S. government to bring up charges against the current government of Haiti for crimes against humanity and crimes against peace? And I think that that's the kind of thing that we have to do. I also think that we have to ask uh, Maxine Waters to talk to Barbara Pelosi. She is the head of the Democratic Party in California, if you're not Nancy, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy, 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 Nancy Pelosi. And we have to assume that all of our senators need to get involved in this, whether they are interested or not. This is a fundamental violation, and if they get away with it in Haiti, they'll do it in Cuba. And if they can get away with it in Haiti, they will do it more in the inner cities of the United States. It isn't just something we're going to do against another country. They're going to do worse prisons in the U.S. There's a connection between one thing and another. Yeah. And I would urge people to think of things that you can do right this minute. And let me tell you a joke. But I, none of my jokes are funny. You can go to your city council and ask them to pass a resolution demanding that the U.S. government get out of Haiti and obey the law. They won't. Maybe they won't pass it. But the fact that you mention it will get them to know that Haiti is an issue for your city. And one of the things the Bush administration is trying to do is to say that the cities, the counties, and the states should not get involved in international matters unless it's something they're interested in, like the NAFTA and so forth. But I think we have to make clear that our city council members, we expect them to take a position on Haiti and violations in Haiti because it affects us. And you start your resolution, whereas the people of the city of such and such are worried about Haiti. You make it clear that it's a local problem. And I think this kind of making a connection is critical. And let nobody off the hook. It's going to be an appeal to your member of Congress, or it's going to be to invoke the uh, Constitution and the United Nations uh, Char charters that, uh, as Dr. Uh, as, uh, Ann has laid it out so clearly, this is what we need to do, is action now, action as quickly as possible. We did this workshop today and yesterday in hopes that we would have people 
as we have here from many different uh, wolf branches, please get back and, and do take at least one action through your branch and try to decide which would be the most significant one. But I think the legal strategy may be our best. And particularly if we can get uh, uh, John Conyers and the House Judiciary Committee in, involved in this through the mechanism that has already been And they started. are supposed to have an election down there coming up soon. But you had a question. Um, I wondered what other corporations are, um, are using the cheap labor in Haiti. You said Disney, Fruit of the Loom, Haynes. Haynes. Well, these are just some of that I knew of. Um, do you know of others? Well, they just think of a major assembly line, and yeah. we're going to come up with them. What website might have all of that? Don't yeah. you know about that? Uh, that is IJDH.org. Yeah, uh, uh, because you, that is, that's a good question, because if we follow the money, mm -hmm. uh, that is how we can stop uh, all these uh, abuses. What did you say? IJDH? IJDH.org. IJDH, which, which is the one I have here, okay. IJDH. And if you want the laws, they're all in this new book of ours, Challenging U.S. Human Rights Violations since 911, and all the, wow. the laws that I've been talking wow. about are in here. And those books are for sale right outside. I've got two left, and I'm leaving in half an hour, so you better dollars the moment. Or you can get his Prometheus books, and you can get it online, but I have two here. And I was going to answer your first question about the different groups in Haiti. As I understand it, there are more than one uh, national or basic groups. I mean, there are French who came in and some French remarried remar with the local people. And then there are the native people of Haiti. That's a different group, you see. So when you say, are there different groups and do they have different attitudes, of course that's true. That doesn't mean that the majority go with one, because the majority voted for RSD. Of course there is a difference. And there are always people in any country who will go with the ruling class, either because they're part of it, or because they're whatever word you want to use, or whatever else, they're misled. But what I think it's worth remembering, and for all people in the United States, that in the 1930s, people who woke up Republicans in 1930 or 31 or 32, became Democrats. Mm -hmm. People who woke up hating black people, for lots of reasons, never knew any, came to work with them in a union. In other corporate interest um, groups all over the world, have, um, opposition groups um, in Venezuela, and, and everywhere where they couldn't get their way, and so I suppose that this has also happened in Haiti, and wonder if there's evidence of that. Evidence that uh, the CIA is at oh, Yes. Uh, yes. Are, are Actually, this report, the... you can get this report, and I'm passing on, uh, give you, uh, goes into that, as well as this book, which uh, is, which, uh, yeah, Haiti, I would recommend if you're interested in reading this book, and you can also get it, uh, the information, uh, uh, you know, on, online. Yeah. And this book can also be obtained at the library. I was just wondering if uh, public interest lobby groups, like Friends Committee on National Legislation, um, I don't know other ones, but that's the one I'm hooked up to on the list, sir, as well as Human Rights Watch or Amnesty, are they sending out alerts to everybody who's on their listservs about this and well, letters Amnesty to Inter write? Am Amnesty International has just declared Father Jean Chus a political prisoner, so okay. he's on the Amnesty. Okay, list. so can letters can be. Yeah. Well, I would say a lot of the national organizations like Amnesty and so forth have not picked up on these treaties. It's going to be up to people in this room and people like us, because for whatever reason, they're not yet into the idea that law matters and that the UN matters and that the treaties matter, so I'm encouraging it in a way that they haven't yet done. The ACLU is just beginning to get that idea now, but it, it needs to be done. I want to say one other thing about the UN so everybody's clear. She mentioned the Organization of American States. It should be clear to everybody that there's an Undersecretary General of the United Nations for, Northern, for the North America. That's not a person we selected. It's somebody who was selected by Canada, United States, Mexico, and so forth, and he's terrible. And he's the one who helped decide who should be invited to come into uh, Haiti. He could have said that Brazil can't come. And he could have encouraged others to come. Cuba can't very well send soldiers into Haiti through the UN. I mean, that's not going to work. So there are a lot of problems about this. But it's not something uh, attacking the UN or saying UN did the bad thing. It's not only the UN Security Council that is responsible, it's also the UN structure. And it really is worth your time 
to learn a little bit about the UN structure and how it operates. The Organization of American States is part of it, but they also have this other Undersecretary General for each, each region. And the more we understand about this, the more we can demand that those of our Congress members who give a damn will do something about it. And to the extent that our Congress members are doing nothing about Haiti, we have to tell them that we as U.S. citizens demand that they do something because our own self, uh, our self-interest is involved. And as she said at the beginning, or somebody said, if they can do this in Haiti, they can do it in Cuba. And that's not going to be funny. I mean, Cuba is a different situation than Haiti. And the power of the Cubans and their determination and their worldwide spell and all the doctors they've sent out all over the world, I guess you yeah. all know that, yes. uh, is going to make a difference. And so if, if we let them get away with it in Haiti, we're just inviting for them to, let them, to get away with it somewhere else, including the inner cities of our own country. Along that line, the Cuban doctors and medical personnel who were sent uh, to Haiti after President Aristide opened up diplomatic relations are still there. And they vowed that they'll stay there. Uh, and they are not going to be pulled back by Cuba, nor will they leave voluntarily under this occupation. This is Cuban policy. This is the policy of Cuban citizens worldwide. They agree to go into and volunteer to go into trouble spots, and they stay even in the worst crises. So uh, thank God they're there. They've made a big difference in the, in the Haitian uh, medical uh, uh, system where they are able to do it. Well, um, I'm still puzzled as to how to go about uh, e effecting uh, a su order or stopping apart from getting the rightfully elected president back into office, me, what's happening now is that people are being killed in their homes by uh, representatives of the United Nations, uh, ordered by the Security Council. So how, who do we speak to about that? You could ask. You can write a letter to the United States State Department condemning what they are doing and saying it violates the law. You can write a letter to the New York Times, which they may or may not publish. You can ask Amy Goodman to do another show. But also, you can ask your own city council to pass a resolution condemning what is happening and send it to your Congress member, so maybe the Congress member will stand up in Congress and say something. The same with your senator. There's nothing keeping them quiet. Mm -hmm. Barney Frank can do more than he's doing. Mm -hmm. Ted Kennedy can do more than he's doing. Uh, I could name a bunch of them. There's no reason that they can't have. They could. They could have a, a whole day in the in in the House where they stand up and have one speech after another about Haiti. It's perfectly possible. One of them could hold a committee hearing on what is happening in Haiti, and especially if you file these Office of Inspector General complaints. And it could be done in the Senate as well. There's nothing stopping Barbara Boxer from asking questions about mm -hmm. Haiti. What I think is everyone like you, every Haitian <clears throat> person who is a U.S. citizen, can at this moment demand that they want their Congress member and their senator to do the right thing. And you can also send it to the, to the Secretary of State's office. They have to open the letter and say you're sending a copy to the U.N. High Commissioner for Human Rights. Those are some suggestions. Now, just if you happen to know the ambassador from one country, any country in the world could sue the United States in the world court, charging violations of what's happening in Haiti. Who is the UN ambassador to Haiti? Uh, who is the US? The US James James Bolton. Is Bolton. Bolton. To Haiti. Bolton. Currently. Yes. Oh, to the Currently. Haiti. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, UN. No, I'm to, to, to Haiti. James oh, Foley. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, I'm sorry. James, James Foley. Fo James Foley, yes. Uh, I, had his, uh, uh -huh. I had his email somewhere. Can I have any contact with him? No, I have not. Can I have a question for the panel? Uh, aside from uh, investigations and debate, has anybody presented uh, a path for mediation or, you know, uh, to correct it? Has anybody said, okay, here's what should happen? Uh, the OAS should come in. Uh, Aristide should just be put back. In other words, this is not a situation where you'd say, pull the UN out and let them figure it out. Let the guys fight by themselves or blockade the island. Mm -hmm. Has somebody come up with a logical, sane agenda or approach? Excuse what? me, I don't agree with that at all. Okay. If everybody left right this very minute hmm. and Aristide came back, if, I think they would solve it very quickly. If there were no U.S. troops, 
no foreign troops, no UN troops. If it were only Haitians, then Aristide came back. That's my own opinion. I don't know what you would say. Well, in terms of that, they would, they would, the Haitians would be able to handle their own affairs. Yes. yes. I mean, they did it for hundreds of years. Yes. So just non-intervention, pull out. No intervention. Well, the intervention is what has prevented the, the country to uh, to reach the market, reach their economic uh, uh, potential. So it would. So I would want to tell all, not just the United States, but the UN troops to leave. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, they they have no business. We are a sovereign country. I mean, the okay. same thing. I mean, you, uh, we wouldn't want to have foreign. Uh, troops in the United States right, to but interfere in, in, in United States affairs. We are, sovereign, are, we are a sovereign country. What business do we, anybody has to interfere exactly in, our, in our business? Point. People took President Bush and his wife and children and put them on an airplane and flew around and decided to take them to finally yes. some little tiny country in Central Africa. I mean, that's what, what happened. Yes. A person was president. He was he elected was by the majority. No, there's no problem with that. The problem <laughs> is that the UN has been dragged into Not the UN, the Security Council. Well, right. I'm sorry. The UN, in the public mind, Yes, but that's the not the UN effort. is in there committing crimes. And what are we going to do to keep the UN as our, an organization we turn to for resolving conflict now that it, number one, is being used by the United States to intervene in internal affairs in other countries, and that's supposed to be all right because there are good guys coming in, keeping people from being killed, but they're causing people to be killed. Right. If you're going to use the word UN that way, I have a rule in my house. You can't use the word UN. You have to say you mean the Security Council, the Secretary General, <laughs> the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, the uh, International Court of Justice, or whatever I left out. There are six organs of the UN, and we do not ever say the word UN. So if you're saying that the UN is doing the wrong thing in Haiti, the UN has said nuclear weapons are illegal. Did you know that? That's the world court. Nobody knows that. That's part of the UN. It is not helpful to say the UN is doing things. So okay. just so you know, right. so what you need to say is the Security Council with U.S. power is doing the wrong thing in Haiti. Oh, and that's, that's just semantics. Everybody says really? the UN. Here. No, but it's not no. semantics. You don't no, 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 she's well, correct. You don't say U.S. when it's you mean Bush. Semantics. You don't say U.S. when right. you mean Bush. Yeah. You no, say she's Bush. right. In the same way, the U.S. <coughs> has got a house, has got a Congress, has got a president, yeah. has got a Supreme yeah. Court. You don't say U.S. when you when you mean Bush. You say Bush. Well, this That's is why right. I have not been saying the U.S. government. I have not been saying the United States. I said the U.S. government because we, are, you as citizens, are not the one who are doing harm to Haiti. It is our government who is representing us who is doing the harm. I, I think the point is we need to um, request or demand that all of the foreign troops be removed from yes. Haiti, including and the, the UN troops, and I wouldn't call them peacekeepers right. in this sense. Right. Um, and that the president come back. And, oh, of course, and the return. RST, oh, RST. be returned. Right. Who is in charge of the UN Troops. Brazil. Brazil. They're leading the, the Brazil. You have a handout on that, the Brazilian uh, leadership. Uh, Brazil took it on. Brazil wants to become a member of the Security Council. They were very eager to take up the post when it was offered to them. But you also have troops from Jordan. You have UN forces from several other countries there. I don't know exactly the composition right now, but it is under the aegis of Brazil. I have a question. And uh, talking politics, would the World Court be a good venue to uh, try this intervention, this invasion? Well, I read, we read Article 2.4 says, no nation shall use force or threat of force against the territorial integrity or political independence but, of any nation. I mean, in terms of real politics, is that possible? There are two ways that the case could come before the World Court. One way is if one nation sues another nation, any nation could sue the U.S. or France for what's happening in Haiti. The other way is the General Assembly, by majority vote, could vote to ask the world court, is what is happening in Haiti legal or illegal? That's how the new nuclear bomb issue came up. So the group of nations, if they, but why don't they do it? Because they're afraid of economic catastrophe. So we have to somehow make clear to U.S. corporations that we're going to boycott them, we're going to stop dealing with them if they are violating fundamental law and causing murder all over the world. And I think we have to make that point equally clear. 
I don't mean to sound quite the way no, I sound. That's a, well, no, that's no, a very good point. No. I mean, we can make a declaration, a, a branch can do it, an individual with boycott Disney products. Absolutely. Boycott Haynes and Peru alone. Exactly. Boycott any manufacturer who's now using Haitian labor under arms. How do you think these guys uh, are controlling the workforce down there? Mm -hmm. well, we, we know had that the boycotts. You know, there was a time when we had boycotts. It does take a lot of people, so we have to initiate a huge. Somebody massive. has to initiate, though. It has to start with one action. Mm -hmm. But Just that's like what caused council. the change in South Africa, where the Longshore Union would not unload the exactly. ships right. with the stuff that was coming from South Africa. It made a difference. Haiti's smaller than South Africa, but it is a significant country. Otherwise, we wouldn't be playing around with this. And everything we do that will help cause uh, a change in Haiti will help save Cuba and will help save us. Folks, if you read the Patriot Act and the Homeland Security Department Act and the new things mm -hmm. they're going to do about surveillance exactly. and what they're doing to immigrants and they're cutting education, we're mm -hmm. there building fascism in this country. And I do not use the word, I use the word like a lawyer. It is called fascism. Mm -hmm. And for the, we are in a worse situation than we've ever been in the history of the world because one nation by itself has the power to destroy all life on this planet, either through nuclear weapons or through environmental policy. That is the situation at this moment. It wasn't the situation five years ago. That's the situation today. And if we all go on doing everything we've been doing as hard as we can, we will fail. We have to do what we've been doing and do something new. We have to have a new approach. You have to learn the word United Nations Security Council is what the problem is. You have to learn the word OAS. You have to learn the word United Nations Charter. You have to learn the, uh, of many things. I'm just giving you a few examples. We cannot continue doing what we've been doing. We have to doing something new that is different, that is stronger. And what I'm saying is we're looking for the lunch counter. I mean, we need to, they sat down at the lunch counter and it made a damn difference. They sat down at their jobs in the 30s, they had a sit-down strike. We have to do something new that has not been done before, that involves everybody. We don't argue, we work together. And if we don't, we ourselves, it is, I'm not worried about the people of Haiti as much as I am about us. I mean, we never have solved slavery in this country. They put it out. The United States never made a clear, absolute discussion that we were going to stop human slavery. We would never agree to reparations. Just so you know, I was at South Africa, the World Conference Against Racism, and the U.S. walked out. They did not walk out right. over Israel and Palestine. They walked out because it was proposed that there be reparations paid to the slave ancestors, slave descendants. And you read the list of the countries that were slave owners. It wasn't just the U.S. and England and France and Belgium and Holland and Germany and Italy, and I can't think of any others. There were a lot Spain. of them. I'm sorry, Spain, absolutely, and Portugal. So that's why the U.S. walked out of a world conference against racism, because they can't even face, in the year 2001 it was, they couldn't face the issue that slavery is wrong and that we owe a debt, and that the descendants of slavery and of what we did to the Native Americans, it's in every, per, every Native American knows what the situation is. Every person of color, African American, knows what the situation is. And if we as women, largely women in this room, don't understand that this is part of the struggle of women to be treated, right. anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Dile que el de mi dice 